I found uh, it, it took me by surprise, I suppose, uh, as a young leader, uh, you know, a dad with four growing kids, life was busy, church was beginning to grow. I began to realise I was spending all my time with Christians. The only non-Christians I knew as a leader was through other Christians. And I had to intentionally block out time to get yeah. alongside non-Christians. And what we've realised, we, in our busy church life, as the church grows, you, you can suck Christians into more and more basically Christian meetings. Yeah. And we've had to plan to give people space intentionally mm. rub shoulders with because out there one in five would want to talk about Jesus if you got alongside them. Yeah. But the members say, oh, I'm so busy in all the meetings that the church mm. runs. Mm. That, so for me personally as a leader, I had to say, I have got to fight for time. Mm. And I'm going to, but I'm so busy. But I was like, I can't afford not to do this. Yeah. And uh, it, so it didn't come naturally. It had to be an intentional thing to get along. So I started playing sport. And uh, Saturday used to be a very busy work day. And all of a sudden, you know, the sport I play is on a Saturday afternoon. I can't lose five hours. But I can't afford not to lose five hours if I'm going to get alongside guys of my age and stage and the church get the message that they too have to intentionally get alongside outsiders but as the church has done that, they do find these people like, yeah, I'll come to church or I'll come mm. to carol service or mm. I'll come to a going up, walking up a mountain somewhere. Yeah, I'll come. Oh, oh, right. And that, that's that been my experience. Yeah. Is that what you found in? Yeah. And I think as you, as I'm reading the Bible with non-Christians, mm. I'm learning how people are thinking and yeah. that's shaping my preaching. Yeah. That's shaping how you talk about things to mm. engage uh, people. So, yeah, there's so much blessing. And it's so exciting. I mean, I just... The privilege to lead someone to Christ it doesn't get better yeah, than that. No, yeah. No, yeah. And then to, to baptize them and then see them grow is yeah. just the most thrilling thing. Yeah. 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 Great. And I think this is a, a, a crucial aspect is you're saying sitting down, reading through the Bible, talking with those who don't know Christ, you begin to understand how they think. Mm. And I think that, that, that often we, we, you can live in a bubble if you're not careful and yeah. you're, you're reading books and you're talking to other people about how those who don't know Christ think. But if you're not careful, you're, you're, you're living in that bubble rather than actually getting to know how people think. And um, I think as you say, you, you, you learn how to shape your language. You learn how what words mm. are they will connect with, mm. what they will understand. And mm. I think that comes out in your preaching. Yeah, it it does, should yes. anyway, yeah. that yeah. you can begin to pick those up in a yeah. much more effective way. Yeah. Uh, so it's crucial, I think, to, to be in communication, talking, and dialogue with those who don't know Christ. I'm conscious, even as I say this, that I need to carve out more time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, (laughs) I mean, Rico Tice was with him a few days ago, and he was saying he thinks that I should insist everyone on my staff team spends you know, an afternoon a week engaging with non-Christians just to model this because he's yes. quite convinced unless the staff team do it, yes, yeah. it, it will not flow down no. to the life of the yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's something I'm pondering. I know it, when I was a, a young leader, the church was growing. There were a lot of pastoral needs, as there always are. Mm. I found it it was hard to say if I put myself, say, running the the, the seeker group, the Explore Christianity course, for example. That was an evening where I couldn't go and visit a needy church member. Mm. But I realized if the church was to go forward, I needed to be near the people coming towards the gospel. I had to give my very best energies. And that was a hard thing because some of the church members said, well, you don't visit as much as you used to. You know, what about Mm. discipling us? But I realized, and and it was a tough thing to do because nobody likes being moaned at. I don't like being, I want to be approved of. I, I I like to be liked, we all do. But I realized that I had to be close to the people on their journey towards the gospel, which meant some of our members, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to look, somebody else is going to have to look after you because I need to be near the people on the way towards faith for all kinds of good reasons. Um, Jenny and I started giving our best energies, anybody new, anybody not yet a Christian, people coming to courses, we would invest in those relationships so that we built up some conversion momentum yeah. and began to realize that seeing people saved, that should be a normal part of church life. Yeah. And uh, God is sovereign. He's, he's king over all you know, of this. But we have that passion to win people for Christ. 
And I know some younger leaders I've met, you know, they kind of retreat into the study. They, mm. they see their dealings with non-Christians primarily through the sermons. And I found my dealings with non-Christians mainly through their one-to-one. And then that informed the sermons. That's exactly what you found, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah. yeah.